everybody, welcome back. The rare to Isaac Day here as we go for five wins in a row. Um, we had a really tough one yesterday. We had Mom's Knife for like the entirety of the run. And, uh, oh, they really tried to throw it to us at the end. They, tr oh, what do we start with the tears upgrade? Dila, MYPP. <laughs> I'm just not, sorry, sorry. I'm, internally, I'm, I'm some combination of like 55 and 14. I come by it, honestly. You know, I, I I read a lot as a kid, and now as an adult, I spend way too much time on the internet, and I think that's how you end up with those those two halves of a personality. We, um, I, I don't really, Eve's not my favorite character, mostly because of the kind of, uh, and, and we're lucky that we have a tears upgrade to make it better, but um, the, the starting damage is pretty bad. But all we need is maybe like a bomb, you get a spirit heart, you play the razor blade, and all of, all of a sudden we're, we're well equipped to at least handle things in the early game. Ah, uh, it's very interesting, right? We got a couple of... We got a couple of battery charges along with the D100. You don't need the razor blade to succeed as Eve, so we, we, we could think about it. I don't think there's a doubt in my mind about that. Um, but it... Okay. <laughs> it's just probably not the way we want to build immediately. You know what I mean? It's probably it's probably not the first way we would look at at constructing this run. All right, but I like I like where we're at statistically here. I don't even think we'll re. I know you know, but but I'm getting roasted, dude. I'm getting roasted over the zaniness. You know, even when you're a, you're the father to a three month old infant, people want you to to live your life like you're Xander Cage at the start of the movie Triple X, where he he jumps out of a. You've seen it. He 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 drives like a convertible sports car off the cliff and then s skydives out of the car while it's falling and you're like dude did you have to wreck the car see this is <clears throat> oh crap i really wanted those bombs this is more my speed this is more my speed sacrificing all of our possible advantages to get an item that does basically nothing for us <laughs> to be fair i really wanted those bombs i just kind of overextended but um Excuse me? Excuse me? Um, I have Continuum. Why are my shots not passing through the wall? I'd like to speak to the manager, please. I apologize for, for, for the boredom here, but we'll be moving on. Because I'm a sucker, like I said. Etc. Etc. Fricked up in the head, Nat. Let's see what we got in here. I, I'm willing to throw down Wheel of Fortune, because I think that we will probably get some troll bombs in here. It's all about, like, the force multiplier of making semi-useless cards actually do something for us. Turdlings, please. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing well. We didn't really cover it in the last episode. You know, just, just settling into this new schedule. Enjoying uh, January, which is a month that has, you know, some negatives, but also some perks, I guess. Uh, oh, well, we, we... You know what? This is where you absolutely just do that to protect your, your Whore of Babylon status. I suppose you could have just done it until you had one HP left. And then maybe that's a little bit more effective for, like, deal with the devil purposes. But I think this is totally fine as well. Sometimes we can get a little bit too, in my opinion, bogged down with, you know, what's best. When in reality, like, I think what works is, is a more productive question. Not everybody's going to agree with me on that. People always, especially, oh, don't even get me started. I, I was a friend of the coders. top of my class at Polytechnic Vocational Institutes and programming classes. Now, that's not really meant to be a flex. It's very easy to be amongst the top students in your class when you take only one class a semester. It gives you a lot of time to dedicate. Quite frankly, I felt sorry for some of the other people. They're taking a full course load. They're like, who the heck's blowing out the curve? And you're like, oh, it's the guy that's taking only project management this semester. Regardless. I thought I was a friend of the programmer. You make one joke about programming where I'm like, man, I'm not that concerned with all this memory management stuff. I'm just like, I'm just trying to make the next Facebook. People go, well, your courses must have been garbage. Then I'm like, dude, come on. I'm just, I'm writing FizzBuzz over here and you're, you're out there begging the question. Well, when you start having databases with trillions of data points in it, this architecture is not going to work. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna run a database with trillions of data points in it, dude. I'm just gonna build the next Facebook. It's not that hard, okay? What is it? Picture equals... Picture P equals new picture, open parentheses. Uh, profile, close parentheses. Duh. There you go. It's like half done for you already. No problem. Easy. I think we're gonna keep the razor blade. I'm very pleased with this run now, but I, I think we are gonna keep the razor blade. No, I heard, uh, Razor Scooters. Am I gonna do it? I guess I'm gonna do it. I heard Razor Scooters getting so dangerous. Parents have started buying their kids Razor Blades. <laughs> razor Blades. It's a joke, um, it's a joke from Frank Caliendo pretending to be Jay Leno from... I believe it was from, like, Monday Night Football 75 years ago. Oh my god! What <laughs> kind of coffee? Oh my lord, that is too strong. Good god. Um, you That's probably the... F I, dude, I got a pretty good bitterness tolerance. Can I tell you something, though? I'm actually stoked. When the coffee's too strong... At least when it's like your first coffee of the day or your second coffee of the day. Um, I, I get a little stoked. Why? Because it's like, you know... It's like, oh, you know, there's nothing I could do but drink it at this point. Um, well, they, actually, I'll probably drink like a third of it and then fill the rest up with some water. But um, sometimes I would have... Like, I remember I, I took a flight. Um, I think it was one of the times we flew to Japan, maybe. Now, that's a flex. Um, but, you know, we went to the Starbucks in the airport. It was like, you know, 8 a.m. or something like that. I was like, I'll take a venti cold brew. Feeling a little tired. And then, I, the way that cold brew is made, if you're not familiar with it, it's, uh, wh what you brew is concentrate. So you don't, it's like rocket fuel. You don't just pour the brewed cold brew into a cup and go, here you go. You dilute it with water. Um, to, otherwise, like, you're, you're gonna end up consuming enough caffeine to maybe be unpleasant, but also the taste is not gonna be superb. Um, which, you know, doesn't really bother me all that much, to be honest, but, um, let's put it this way, if I, if I was drinking it exclusively for taste, I'd be drinking a lot more, like, Dr. Pepper and a lot less, you know, black coffee, but, um, either way, I remember they gave me the cold brew, and as soon as I took a sip, I was like, this is just complete cold brew concentrate. It's, like, at least two times stronger, up to maybe, like, four to five times stronger than a cold brew is supposed to be. And Kate was like, oh, do you want to, like, take it back and tell him to dilute it? And I was like, are you crazy? This is, like, a, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> Probably just got, like, eight bucks worth of cold brew for three bucks, you know? It's a, it's a heck of a deal. Eh, I'll, I'll persevere. I'll, I'll find a way to persevere here. Yeah, things things have been good. Trying to, you know, Gex today, trying to get a little bit more, um, a little bit zanier, a little bit more banter driven. We've been talking, and, and it's a natural, like, ebb and flow, for sure. But, uh, mm, you know what? I'm willing to give this a shot. We want this to be two of diamonds, and it was not, but that's actually still fine. These are, these are still good items to get here. Um... And you know, I might even find myself getting a two of clubs anyway. It's three bombs for five cents. I don't know, maybe maybe not. Maybe I don't care. Maybe I'd rather just do that. I would like a little bit more money, but uh, I, I don't know if we're going to get it. We'll see. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, like, I, I feel like we've been talking about inside baseball a lot, and, and some people love it, some people are like, don't stop talking about it, and some people are like, oh my god, this is the biggest snooze I've ever experienced in my entire life. We do have a lot more money. Um, and, and honestly, I feel like both takes are valid. You know, one of the reasons we've been talking so much inside baseball is because of the fact that I switched up my workflow recently, which I don't do all that often, and every time I do it, there's opinions. I don't think this doubles the efficacy of the flies, so we're gonna reroll this. That's a, a half price item that makes everything else half price. And you know what? I, I will buy it on the cheap. I don't mind. I don't mind paying that price for it. And then the compass is very nice as well. I guess we could have gotten three bombs for three cents, which is also a pretty sick deal. But 
Um, compass is, is nicer, I think, for sure. This, this is pretty much set at this point, I think. This is a very, very strong run. Serves probably in the future to only get stronger. I mean, that's typically how it goes, but you get the idea. So you, Sometimes, Curse of the Unknown can, can trip you up a little bit. But, um... But yeah, I think I think we're moving out of that now. You know, I, I've said my piece on the new schedule. Um, there's parts of it that are working super well. I, I would say most of it is working super well, and it, it's kind of apparent in the sentiment, but also in the the analytics, to be honest, um, on on both platforms. And then you know, like I and I can also feel it like on my mental health. Like I just feel lighter, I guess. Which is, you know, anytime you do a change in your life, I think usually it's going to feel lighter at first, and then it takes a little bit longer for, you know, long-term sentiment to set in. But but it, it's a good sign, or at least not a bad sign, to be excited about it early. Um, but then now that I'm, like, settling into this routine, we can get back into actually trying to be entertaining instead of spending, you know, every stream and every video justifying, like, why some of the Spelunky content comes from streams instead of some of the Spel uh, instead of all of the Spelunky content, you know, being recorded, uh, me talking to myself in my office, right? Which is probably, if you, if you ask people why they watch the content, it's probably more so for <laughs> abstract entertainment rather than uh, an analysis of the business. When the, when the analysis of the business and my bizarre place in it, um, pops up naturally and infrequently, I think it's fine, but, you know, when it, be, when it becomes a fixation. Like, I, I, you know, this is actually a good jumping off point for a discussion. I don't want to be one of those YouTubers, and I, and I don't think I am, or let's not even say YouTubers at this point, but like, you know, I don't want to be one of those content creators whose entire existence is essentially predicated on making content about themselves. And I think there's, there's a lot of different ways to get sucked into that. I, I've never even really come very close, but um, there's a couple of ways I see it. One way is almost in the ego-driven, narcissistic way, where once you get a little bit of a following, people will watch you do anything, and then you start doing stuff like, you know, new mansion tour, you know, hey, check out my, uh, I bought a used Ferrari Testarossa, you know, stuff like that. Hey, we rented a private helicopter to do, and then like all the, I mean, it's, it's different demographics, right, but... Pardon me, I had a little cold brew concentrate burp. But I'm always like, it's crazy to me that like, you'd be like a streamer that, you know, your income comes from direct financial support. And then like some of the content you make is like, here's me spending like, you know, $250,000 on a car. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I, in, I side with the streamer, believe it or not. And or you probably do because I'm, I have a little bias. But like what, what the streamer does with their own money is their own business. Um, you know, just because you give like a, or you own a tier one subscription, that doesn't mean that for every financial decision the streamer makes, you get to be like, well, you know, as someone who owns some class A shares of, you know, youtube.com slash JD Courage, I would suggest that you, you know, I, I've been recently appointed to the board of directors of this business as I own a tier three subscription. Um, and uh, personally, I don't think you should have gotten the Lamborghini Uros. I think you maybe should have purchased like a Toyota Corolla instead, for example. Um, this is Depths one. All right. You know, you don't really get to be like that. But I am always stunned that like there will be like you know YouTubers who are like check it out. You know, I'm like popping bottles of Dom Perignon on a private plane, and people will be like, nice. Here's twenty bucks. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it's, I'm not even, like, obviously at this point it's not an anomaly. It happens all the time. It's just something that, you know, is, is a little unusual for sure. People will be like, I don't want to donate to charity because, you know, hey, all these charities, they spend so much on marketing and on, you know, operating costs and stuff like that. It doesn't go to the person in need. But then they'll be like, yeah, okay, this guy, like, it's one thing to like, like to donate to somebody who's got a lot of money is one thing. Of course, you know, if you enjoy the content, you throw, you know, five bucks into the cup or whatever. I can understand that. But when somebody's content, to some extent, is predicated upon, like, look at this lavish lifestyle. And you're like, I want to be there one day. You're an inspiration. And then you give them, like, a hundred bucks. I'm like, well, probably if they're a sound financial analyst, their first piece of advice would be don't d donate money to millionaires, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, um... 
Hey, you do get a service out of it. They say your name, say your name. No one is around you. Say, baby, you're going to do soon. You better go. I mean, we, we've been down that road before. Me and Dan laugh about it all the time whenever, like, you'll see a YouTuber make a video that's like, you know, my new Bugatti. And then the whole video, they're like, check it out. Sprung for the, like, you know, carbon fiber on the inside and the white leather seats instead of the black leather seats. And there's an extra $35,000. But, you know, if you want it, you want it. And then they'll end the video by being like, thanks for all your support, guys. I couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> you know? It's true. It's that's the thing. It's very true. And it's their business. It's not mine. People like seeing it. People like seeing people they enjoy be successful. I suppose, but um it's, I don't know. It's just funny. If you if you can't see the humor in it, feel free to be offended, I guess, by that one. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. Um let me let me caffeinate here. But there's a there's a flip side as well. So there's kind of like that narcissistic part of YouTube. You see it all the time, especially like as I've been watching more like investing content on YouTube. I'm here to tell you, like sometimes, and, and I, I'm not going to make this about investing because I understand it's very tone deaf to talk about it, you know, given the economic conditions in the world right now, um, without a doubt. So I'm not going to, you know, mm, just YOLO it all on Tesla stock, you know, I'm not going to be that guy. Um, and a lot of people are, are not even just disinterested in it, but, but like actually put off by it, which I can totally understand, you know. Um, but if, if you're one of those people, and there's been a few that have been like, Hey, NL, hearing you talk about investing has piqued my interest. Are there any other content creators I should watch to maybe learn some stuff? Yes. So there's very, there's, there's a lot of great people on YouTube, um, depending on your level of, of expertise, probably one of the, the biggest and best resources for a, a beginner or an intermediate like myself, even. Um, if I can be so, uh, if I can praise myself, because I've only been doing it for like two months, but um, is a, a YouTube channel called The Plain Bagel, which goes over like relatively basic concepts and, and things to watch out for in the investment industry. Um, for, for people, I would say ranging from beginners to like, yeah, I kind of know like the basics. What you should definitely not do is watch videos from people who are like, you know, the one stock you absolutely must buy, guaranteed to go 10x this year. Like, that stuff will get you in, in trouble. It's not based on any logical sense, for the most part. I, I'll take this, but not take the pills, I think. It's, it's more or less exclusively predicated upon... Uh, getting you to to feel like FOMO, like, oh, if I don't buy this, like, everybody else is going to be dry. They're going to be popping champagne bottles in Hawaii. And I'm going to be like, uh, you know, just sitting here on my computer. You know, so that, that stuff is designed to make you, like, think irrationally and, and pump a stock that they actually just own. And as a result, they're trying to get you to take a position in as well but anyway i digress but yeah it's the same thing in, in that side of the industry there's a ton of people that like they'll do videos that are like they pull their lamborghini up on the tarmac and then like get into a private well they're getting into the private plane like somebody walks up to them with a louis vuitton duffel bag with the zipper open and just like tons of hundred dollar bills sticking out of it i'm like i don't know <laughs> it's you know i've watched like some business documentaries and stuff like that i've never seen like uh I've never seen a genuine, like, wealthy person, uh, like, drive their sports car onto the tarmac, uh, at the airport, and then, oh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Bezos, your, uh, ten billion dollars in the Louis Vuitton duffel bag, like, it's just, it appeals to, like, uh, an idiot's idea of what it means to be fabulously wealthy, I think. Anyway, that's not really where I was trying to take this one, but um, the flip side of it is there are content creators who, for whatever reason, can't help but, like, get themselves into... Like, they just keep stepping on mousetraps, if you know what I mean. Like, originally, maybe they started out and they're, like, a gaming YouTuber, and then they put their foot in their mouth on something and they make a video, like, apologizing for it. And then, you know, after making the video apologizing for it, people are like, you should have stood by what you said. So they make a video, like, apologizing for their apology. Then they go on, like, 12 podcasts to talk about the apology. And, like, it's just, like, it's crazy, man. I mean, first off, like, it sounds miserable, for sure. But I'm also like, man, how long can you, like, sustain that before people are just like, 
How much... <laughs> this, this YouTuber's gotten, like, so much content out of this, like, one meaningless event. Like, it's crazy, right? So, yeah, I'm always... Uh, well, not always, but I, I try to notice now and then, at least, when... There's maybe that impulse to be like, I'm gonna spend every... Hey, let's go. Every video justifying, like, this is why I did this, this, and this. And just, like, you know... It's like, you, if you want to watch this, there's, like, behind-the-scenes content, right? Imagine if you went and saw, like, a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, and, like... You know, after you watch the movie, in the next movie, Spider-Man was like, you know... Uh, the reason, it, a lot of people think it was a plot hole that um, there was the Infinity Gauntlet that was located in uh, Odin's vault in Thor 2. But actually it wasn't, the, if, if you go back and watch Thor Ragnarok, that wasn't the real Infinity Gauntlet. That was clearly a fake, as mentioned by uh, Kate Blanchett. You know, like if they just spent all the content justifying the response to the content, you would be like, I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> So, you know, I try to I try to strike a good balance between inside baseball, which is something we talk about a lot and something I'm very familiar with because, you know, I mean, you you, you, you got to speak about what you know, you know, you got to stay within your circle of competence. I don't I don't know that much about a lot of things. I know a lot of trivia, but unless you you want me to just recite, you know, like, well, the 2000 Olympics were in Sydney, the 2004 Olympics were in Athens, the 2008 Olympics were in Beijing, the 2012 Olympics were in London, 2016 Olympics were in Rio de Janeiro, 2020 Olympics were postponed, but they're scheduled to take place in Tokyo in 2021, you know, like Unless, I mean, some people are like, yeah, that's my jam. And then a larger swath of people are like, I'm asleep right now, so do whatever you want, king. But for me, you know, it's, we gotta, we gotta strike a balance. It's, it's cyclical, you know? You make a change, you're stoked. The change manifests, people have feedback. You focus maybe a little bit too much on the negative feedback. And then you, you you get out of it, and and we're we're out now. We're not even pulling out of the muck. We've already we've gotten the car has gotten traction. Dude, what if there was like an Uber for airplanes? No, this is not a good idea, dude. I got roasted. You really like? I will say it's funny, isn't it weird? And I I don't know. There's like a bit in here. I, I feel bad for the taxi industry, and I, I, I go off on taxis sometimes, but I always like to couch it in the reality, which is that my grandfather, you know, he the first, like, I don't know, 30 years of his professional working life, he was like a contractor, he did, you know, construction and drywall and stuff like that, and then, you know, the last, like, 10 years uh, of his life, he was a cab driver. Um, so I, I got a lot of respect for the cab industry, genuinely, and, you know, I, I have had family members in the industry. And I think that the fact that Uber and Lyft and, and so on and so forth have disrupted the industry is really, like, unfair. Uh, like, the, you know, the fact that there were all these civic barriers to entry, depending on where you lived, obviously, um, that would, you know, make it very, very expensive or difficult to become a cab driver. And then the entire Lyft business model is just like, yeah, we made an app and it became popular too fast for, like, City Hall to stop it in most places, right? Um, so I genuinely, like, feel bad for the taxi industry there. The other thing that I will say is despite all of those factors, I will in all likelihood never use a taxi again until there's a compelling reason. Simply because they uh, offer a much worse service than, like... Uber and Lyft? I, I I know there's problems with Uber and Lyft, don't get me wrong. You know, particularly in the way they treat their contractors. But at least with Uber and Lyft, I don't feel like I'm gonna die in the car. Well, okay, sometimes I feel like I'm gonna die in the car, but I usually feel like it's gonna be a murder situation more than a... more than, like, a car accident. When I'm, when I'm in a taxi, I'm like, the odds of us dying on the way to the airport are, like, probably, like, 5%. <laughs> Just with the way this madman is driving. But isn't it crazy that, like, a professional driver is not as good at driving as an amateur driver who just does it, hopefully, in their off hours? Or at least that's what I tell myself when I use the app, which I admittedly have, like, have not done since, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, once in 2020? 
Maybe twice now that I think about it. But but anyway. But could, do you really want uh, amateur pilots flying you around? No, I think I would rather have a professional pilot. <laughs> I want amateur drivers. Unless they can get me like Lewis Hamilton. Uh, I want amateur drivers, professional pilots. That's that's my my line of reasoning, dude. Let's let's give this a shot, right? This seems fun. Are we? Do we think we're content to go in? I think we're content to go in there. Poggy, I can eat a good lunch today. Um, but but chat was like uh, they were getting on me, man. I I thought I came up with like a pretty good idea, and chat hated it. So I don't buy frozen pizza very often. I don't mind eating a frozen pizza, but like. I kind of see it as like bachelor chow, you know what I mean? Like you you can eat frozen pizza as like a couple But if you're a family and you got like one or two kids, I mean you're not gonna eat You're not gonna split a frozen pizza in fours most of the time I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's just even though it's a lot of calories. It's not actually like that much matter That like if you've never looked at the back of a frozen pizza box it actually suggests that you split it into fours. Like, it, it's like that's the serving size. Nobody on Earth has ever shared a frozen pizza four ways. Maybe you could eat half of a frozen pizza and you and your your dining partner could be reasonably satisfied. The, the methodology for a frozen pizza <clears throat> is you cut it into quarters after you cook it. Uh, and you usually cook it alone. And then... We're not going to finish this bit, I'm realizing. You eat two of the quarters, aka one half, for dinner, and then you say you're going to save the rest, but then, like, in an hour and a half, you're like, oh, I'm a little peckish, so you eat the third quarter, and then you're like, whoa, am I really going to save one quarter of a frozen pizza in the fridge and eat it tomorrow, and then you just eat that one right before bed, you know? So I was thinking, how sick would it be if they just sold frozen pizzas by the slice? And chat told me that they thought it was the worst idea they'd ever heard. And it undermined my confidence in my business sense. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching. That was a fun episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I'm said a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!